guys, how you doing? Um, what you're looking at right now is my desktop. Uh, specifically speaking, you're looking at all four of my monitors simultaneously and a hideous random background of music. That one's not too bad. That's, let's, let's have one more try and we'll give up. Uh, yeah, that's all pretty cool. Um, yeah, what you're looking at is all four of my monitors. The um, top left here, the very top one on the left, which is why it's called the top left, is a smaller screen that you runs in, um, oh my, it runs in like 1366 by 76, the laptop resolution, basically. Um, the reason I keep that one around is because I use this top one here for all of my communications. Like up here, I'll have Telegram and I'll have Hangouts and whatever other chat program I'm currently using. Um, and then over on the top right, we have my uh, Steam library, my Steam library, uh, which I keep Steam on pretty much all the time. I know dedicating the entire screen to Steam seems stupid, but why not? I've got the monitor, and that one runs in 1440 by 900. Um, I also use this one up here. This tends to be where I put all my file management stuff. Um, so if I'm like moving files around, or like now I'm recording, let me show you that. There you go. I've got a uh, folder there, and I can see that. And then later on, I can move and rename and things uh, however I want. I'll open up another one next to it. And that'll just be my file management and Steam window. And then down here, on the bottom right, there we've got another 1440 by 900 monitor, which uh, these are really these are old panels I've had for a while. They're made by a company called Yuraku, um, Y U R A K U, and they are like they're beautiful in the grounds that they haven't changed in like I've had them like five years, both of them, and they'd still work like the day I had them. I've had no problems at all. They're great. They're using VGA, so I just use a little adapter. But anyway, it's the point. I like these mines a lot. They're really hardy. Um, great colour replication. They're okay. They're good monitor monitors. Um, anyway, I use the bottom right there for um, for uh, web browser. So if I've got a game on the bottom left monitor or I've got something I'm working on the bottom left, on the bottom right will be a website or Crunchyroll or Netflix or what's my media consumption really. Um, what I'll also do with that is when you see me do the Quest Hardcast, I'll have my co-host face on there and I'll just capture the entire monitor outright. Um, and I'll just put his face there, and that's that works for me. That's something I really enjoy doing. It's easier to have a whole window because I can see my co-host still without having to be like, oh, over there somewhere, or look at the tiny preview window. Um, so yeah, that I, it's great for that. But yeah, mostly that one because I don't stream all the time. Um, that will have my co that will have um, a web browser on. And then this main window here, the bottom left one, is my only 1080p screen. It's a 20, 24 inch, no, 22 inch. Oh, it's a fairly it's a bigger than the others anyway. Those are all 19s. Uh, this is a couple of sizes bigger, um, which does look a bit strange there because it juts out, it sticks out a little bit, but it's also high resolution, so that kind of evens out the size difference when I go from one monitor to another. Because obviously, if I uh, if I take an application like Firefox and when I move it from screen to screen, um, it changes size sort of relatively dynamically because of the different resolutions I'm running. Uh, the reason for that is I'm not a rich man. I use all those monitors that I can sort of get where I can get them um, but obviously having one my highest resolution monitor also being the largest kind of compensates that a little bit visually so apart from when I go directly up which is ooh, quite jutting but when I go to the side it doesn't really seem that different because of the different size in the monitors um, but it works great for me anyway uh, if I could afford to I'd like four 24 inch 1080p panels that's what I'd like ideally but I can't afford that so I do I work with what I've got um, the reason I'm making this video, though, specifically, is not just to show you guys my actual workflow, um, but to show you uh, games. Because one of the things I say to people all the time is, um, is I talk about about, about like games loading the wrong monitor. But when I'm streaming, you guys see you can only see my bottom left monitor. I capture the whole monitor in case the actual in-game capture doesn't work properly, which does happen a lot. And I'll launch it, and it won't. Then you'll see me go, hmm, and then it'll appear on screen. Now, the reason for that is also the main reason I use GNOME. I'm going to show you that using the seventh guest. The reason I'm using the seventh guest is because I know that it's, it, it does this particular problem. There we go. It fills all four monitors. As you can imagine, um, that's fairly unplayable. Oh, wow, that's, there we go. Ah. There we go. And then when, I, when it finally, let me turn the volume down. It's so annoying. Um, when it finally, I finally alt, uh, alt enter it and it goes to a window mode. Can you see it up here? Look, up here, look. It's here, over here, look. Over here. It's way over there. Why is it over there? I don't know why it's over there. Um, the reason I like to use GNOME though is because I can just tap the super key. I can just pick that up and move it down here. Great. Sorted. Um, and if it's a full screen application, I can also do that. Pick the full screen application and move it to a different screen. And it dynamically resizes, usually. Um, usually 
<laughs> and then I can just move to the top and it gets bigger, uh, which works great. And the edge snapping in a, the edge snapping in a, in there we go. The edge snapping works fine from monitor to monitor, uh, but mostly it's that it's that overview mode because when you work with this many screens, and one of the problems you have with this many screens is uh, losing where you are. Like you literally like 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 you'll have a game and it will load. Say if I'm using XFC, it'll load on the top left monitor. Like so, the game will be up here, full screen. So imagine there's no title bar, it's full screen application, and I want it here. Now, what I have to do in XFCE is set up plugins and things so that I can right, so I can like right click on my taskbar and send it to another screen. Um, but with GNOME, I just go, ah, and it just when I'm recording and when I'm streaming, that makes so much more sense to just boom, drag it where I want it. That it magically done and that makes so much more sense to me than it does to faff around we send to this monitor or uh, or, or load on this monitor or save you know it just it's fluidly more fluid the downside is because it's so easy to do i don't fix problems like seventh guest always launches on all four screens simultaneously in ridiculous full screen and i just sort of go yeah because it's not become a problem that i have to deal with where if i was using xfce and something loading the wrong screen, I'd go, this is a problem, and I have to actually go sort that out in the uh, in the configuration folder for the game and uh, set that to a specific desktop. So yeah, there are upsides and downsides to using this many screens. Now, the other one people have asked me a lot is why do I use this many screens? And mostly people are saying like, like literally, I've told you guys what I use it for, people are saying use virtual desktops for that. Well, I mostly play video games on my computer. I mean, I do I do video editing, I do streaming, and these sorts of videos, as you know. But the main like thing I do is play video games. Um, and when you're playing video games, um, the ability to have multiple things going on is brilliant. Because uh, you can see the four screens here. Uh, you can see all four monitors. There's also a monitor on my right-hand side, a small 4x3 four, uh, four square old-school monitor I use for IRC. It's attached to a separate machine. That's connected via Synergy. So any time my desk, I feel almost like I'm in a cockpit, and I really, I really enjoy that feeling. Um, but having all this stuff on screen at once means I can be really into a game. I can play World of Warcraft or Civilization. I'm gonna be really effing into it, right? I can be fucking focused. And then if my daughter sends me a text message, uh, sends me a message over Telegram, which is my preferred messaging platform, I can go instead of having to tab out of there, I can just look up. I can just like move my line of sight from here and just move to here. I can see that message that leaves my game. It's great. It's beautiful. Um, it all means I rarely miss a message when someone's trying to get hold of me. If I don't hear it, I'll see it flash. And then on the other monitor down here on the right, I may, I've got, I may have uh, Netflix going on. So I can be watching TV and leveling a character in Warcraft. And it, it, it just means that I don't have to have a separate TV on my desk. Or it means I don't have to be have a TV over there. I can just, everything can happen in this one screen here. And that, for me, is something I really enjoy. Is it the most efficient workflow? No. One big ass monitor and virtual desktops is the solution. And learning to use with like what I'm doing here with four, what I do with four screens, I could quite easily do by by like tiling things correctly. You know, like putting things in the top corner. I don't think you can do it actually. Uh, putting things in the top corner, like using the quadrant in. I could have four things on one large screen, like, right? And then I could have a whole screen for a game, which would probably look cooler. But uh, there's something about having multiple screens that I really, really enjoy. And also, I don't want to see his face. There we go. <laughs> something different to look at. It's getting weird, that was. Um, it's, it's great. Now, whenever I make these sorts of videos, which is just explaining stuff to people, and sort of, I suppose, I suppose audience, uh, fan service, I don't like that word. I suppose it's sort of like telling you guys, answering questions you guys ask all the time. So let me tell you now all the things you're going to ask for. The background changer, I use Variety, which is a application, uh, and you can just, I've got pointed to a folder, which is my Dropbox, which is here, Dropbox wallpapers, and that means if I like an image and I'm on my mobile, I can share with Dropbox, and it magically arrives in the rotation, the backdrop. There are something like a thousand wallpapers in here, so I don't know, and don't ask me where they get that one from, because I just don't know. I just throw them all in a pile, and then this computer, my IRC computer, and my Windows computer all pull from the same Dropbox. Um, so if I delete a folder in one computer, it deletes them on all of them, and it, it's genuinely a wonderful way of working. Uh, what's my theme? I don't know. Let's have a look, shall we, guys? Let's find out, because you guys are always going to ask this. Uh, Numix Frost I'm using at the moment, and the Numix Circle icon pack, and I'm using Adweta. I can't have any problem saying that. Adweta. I'm using the default cursor with Gnome 3, because I like it. I could change it. And there are, it does do weird crashes. Actually. When you change your cursor, 
it has this weird thing where you move something from one screen to another and it crashes the shell. But I think that's been fixed now. But I actually genuinely quite I find the cursors fine. And the shell theme is also New Meets Frost. Um, yep, so that's that. And you guys, that's what extensions do I use, guys? I use old, uh, what's what I'm going to turn I'll tell you, it's caffeine, which is a little coffee cup up here, which when I'm, oddly when I'm recording it, because on the little, the, the, the heat comes off the cup there. But basically, you click it to get heat, and when the coffee cup looks hot, the screen won't go to sleep. When I click it again, the, car, the steam goes away, and the screens just go to sleep as normal behavior. It's great. Dash to dock is this thing on the left here. I've put my mouse there. It goes like that. Put my mouse there. It goes like that. Actually, guys, uh, that's probably, you'll be able to see it better now, actually. That probably makes more sense. Uh, yeah, so there's uh, the dash to dock and caffeine. Uh, native window placement is the one I use, which arranges windows overview in a more compact way. So when I do that, um, and I get the overview mode, which actually looks rubbish when you've got one thing on the screen, not there you go. But that it arranges things in a more natural way to be more representative of their location on the screen. Um, not a big one, could definitely live without it, but it does something I like. Uh, and the other one I use uh, is no top left half corner. Yeah, because obviously I've got two, I've got four screens. In fact, I can show you now, can't I? I've got four screens. Uh, so when I go to the top left, I want it. I might want to go up here, and if the hot corner kicks in whenever I sort of try to go to my top monitor, um, it, it's just it's just really annoying, so I turn off hot corners. If I had a, if I was used on a laptop or a single monitor, I'd probably leave hot corners turned on. It works quite well. Um, places status indicator. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is this button right up here that says places, uh, and that that that's what that does. It just literally lets me quickly gain access to my server there, uh, Dropbox, my streaming folder, which is where I keep all my streaming videos, and um, I've just my usual document folders there for my home directory. That's great. Uh, I don't think we use, oh, uh, top icons puts these up here. Yep, that puts these up here instead of down that tray down here. So right across the top there is where all my icons are, which is definitely my preferred method. Um, and user themes is something built into Gnome. You should know about that. Volume mixer, volume mixer is pretty cool. Um, it just literally puts that there and lets me do that. It's, it's great. Volume <laughs> well, one of those, why, why do I need to plug in for this? It should be everything. Those are all the extensions I need. So one, two, three, three, so five, six, and eight, eight-ish uh, plugins. And don't use loads, but uh, all the ones I use add to my quality of life. Next question you guys are going to ask is what's that on my what's that on my uh, bar on the left-hand side there? That is Chrome. Chrome is the web browser I tend to use the most, not because I'm in favour of Chrome over Firefox. I think they're both fine. Don't really have a favourite, but I watch a lot of Netflix and Cringy Roll and they tend to work better in Chrome than they do in Firefox. So that's why I use Chrome. Uh, the reason I don't use Chromium, uh, Netflix, basically. Um, if I'm doing anything sensitive, I'll use my IRC machine, which is always running through a VPN anyway, and I'll be using Midori on that. So it's not like I really have to worry about leaking data, because like banking and stuff will all be done on that one machine over there that's, that's designed to be more secure from the ground up. Um, then we've got Firefox, yep, yeah, as I said. Oh, my Firefox theme is a bit different, though. Um, where is that? I've already got Firefox open. I have got. No, there it is. Uh, so, oh, don't want to. Don't want to load that. It's uh, <laughs> an extension page. So, uh, in my Firefox theme here, you can see, is a bit different. Um, it doesn't doesn't really match GNOME's theme. I think it'd be a stretch saying it matches GNOME's theme, but I like the way it changes from the default soft look into a more classical hard edged look, um, harkening back to the early days of Firefox. I think. Um, so this is the perception I get. And you guys are gonna ask what it is, and I don't know. So let's go into add-ons. Uh, appearance and it's called there we go ft deep dark is the one there and extensions i use uh couch potato uh yeah you guys can google that one um <laughs> facebook disconnect flag fox uh google music scrobbler uh which lets you scrobble to last fm and uh libre fm inside firefox uh and if uh, nothing else particularly strange reddit enhancement suite uh ublock origin is my preferred ad blocker you should whitelist content creators you visit a lot so you don't block their adverts. I really, really, really believe that. Um, I do that myself. The reason I keep it on as standard though is because I tried running the other web browser once without an ad blocker for like a week and I didn't even last the whole week. I was like, nope, my web experience is slow. I have pop-up ads, I'm reading something and halfway down the page an ad like video slides down. What the fuck is this? Um, but if I go to your website a lot more than like three times, I'll whitelist it. 
Um, I whitelist YouTube all the time. But I don't block ads on YouTube, and I don't block ads on any. In fact, I don't block ads on any stream inside actually. So yeah, uh, if you're a responsible ad blocker, there is nothing wrong with using ad block. Nothing wrong whatsoever. And anyone tells you shouldn't use ad block is an idiot. The web is a horrible place for ad block, and there is nothing wrong with ad block. Be responsible. Sorry, rant over. And flash block's currently disabled because for some reason I like flash block, but for some reason uh, it buggers up um, it buggers up YouTube videos in Firefox. So I'm looking into that at the minute. Uh, also, Facebook disconnect. Facebook disconnect's awesome because Facebook disconnect um, completely stops Facebook loading in your web browser. Basically, it stops the little like buttons loading and everything. It's awesome. I don't have a Facebook account, so loading that shit just slows down my browsing experience. Um, yes, I know I could use uBlock Origin to accomplish the same thing. I know, guys. I understand how it works. I just like the easy option. I'm really lazy. Uh, next one is files. Yes, I keep files on my start bar all the time. I know I could get to it from places, but I like it there where I can click on it. It's, it's fine. It's my desktop. Go away. Uh, OBS, which is uh, obviously the streaming. The streaming is obviously my video recording package I use. Currently running version 13.1. R6 G560B69E. Wow. Wow. I don't even know how to start with that. And underneath that is obviously uh, Steam, which is my favourite game platform. I wish there were other options on Linux, but GOG um, need to get their Galaxy thing because once you install a game off GOG, you sort of like go, I've got a home folder full of GOG games. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, not very useful. I would love the Galaxy to work on Linux and I would definitely buy my games from different places but at the moment I pretty much buy everything from Steam because it just works in one place um, it's just there and you click it and it just loads it's great <laughs> I, don't have to buy, I don't have to do any file management um, you, why am I telling you you understand this that's my uh, Plex server which for obvious reasons I'm not going to load uh, you should respect copyrights I watch a lot of stuff that I purchase DRM free in case you're wondering um, yeah, I, like, I, really like, I really like independent cinema I like independent films and stuff so I watch a lot of those uh, Google Music, which is my preferred music streaming platform. I do though use um, I do though use uh, where's it gone? Uh, that's weird. I do use this thing called uh, Google Music Black in my web browser. Uh, there you go. Look, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It, uh, it makes it all dark and gothic looking, and that coupled with uh, the scrobbling extension you just saw, uh, it's pretty 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 cool. I like that a lot. I'm sorry about the beep in my phone. Uh, that there is Pocket Caster, my preferred podcasting uh, client. Uh, I like, I've got the premium version of that one um, that allows me, it's not actually signed at the moment, which is pretty annoying. Um, to keep signing up for some reason. But yeah, basically, once you pay for premium, it's like £10, uh, I don't know, $14 or something. And then you get to sync between devices. So if I listen to a podcast on my phone, and then uh, LG G3, in case you guys are wondering, um, and then I can listen to, and I can come home, sit down, I just carry on listening on my PC and from where I left off. So that's great. I like podcasts a lot. I listen to a lot on there. Uh, underneath that is Google Hangouts, which I don't need an icon for because it launches every time I load Chrome. Uh, it launches the full screen one, which I put at the top monitor usually, but I didn't really want to show you guys my chat history with my daughter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I like an icon there just so I can find it quicker or if I lose it or if um, or if I have closed it and I went back to it. That's just a nice quick launch there. Telegram, same reason. It's my favorite messaging client by a long way it's, it's brilliant it's encrypted it's encrypted in ways that make sense it's not open source the client is but the server isn't but of all the chat programs out there it's probably the one i trust the most at the moment um but i'm not married to any chat service like i use hangouts because on all android phones i know people can use it and get hold of me through the youtube channel um so i use it for that and then for friends and family it's telegram all the way but like i say if something more secure and more reliable comes along, I will switch. Not married to it at all. Um, I'm even thought about setting up my own chat server, maybe, because uh, my server's always on. And uh, that there is Reminia. Remini, Remini. It's, a, it's the client that I double click that, and the honey badge is my Windows PC, and it, it's over there. And I don't have to stand up, walk over there uh, to sort out like an update or something for streaming, which. Sounds really lazy given how close it is, but seriously, guys, you'd be surprised how often that happens. Um, other things I wanted to show you guys, I mean, like, because you guys just ask loads of questions and I lose track of stuff people have asked me. Um, so other things I could tell you is I'm running Manjaro Linux. Um, I use, uh, I use, what is that? Tilda? Ooh, I took a screenshot. That's Tilda, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, 
you know, terminal. Yeah, I'm running currently. It says Arch Linux. It's actually Manjaro. I don't know why. I don't really know why it says Arch, but it is, it is Manjaro. I'm running most definitely. Uh, yeah, there you go, Manjaro. There we go. Uh, and I am currently running a lot of stuff. Um, I've got 16 gig of RAM in this PC. Uh, I've got 120 gigabyte SSD for my operating system, and then I've got a terabyte spinner for my games and stuff. Um, I use 2.5 inch drives even though I've got a desktop PC. Uh, the reason is I genuinely can hear the rattling of a full size drive. So in the PC that's right down here next to me, right here, I use uh, I use 2.5 inch drives, just quieter, more energy efficient, makes sense to me. Um, and then my server has got a lot of space in for every to, for all the videos and stuff I create, but I don't keep any of my PC, it's just games. So I've got like 400 gig of games on here at the minute, which is pretty bad really. Um, but whatever, that's what I like to do. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm not addicted to hookers, so I can do whatever I like. Um, are there any applications? Because you guys, the other thing people ask me is, you guys you have recommended applications? And I go, no, I don't have recommended applications. Um, do I? I don't think so. I think OBS is the best thing that ever happened to Linux for streaming uh, to Twitch and for creating the type of content I create for. I think Blender's amazing for the little bit of video editing I occasionally do. Um, I would love to learn Blender more. My biggest regret is not not putting the time in yet to do that, to make awesome videos using Blender. Would, lo would love to do that. Uh, definitely something I want to look into. Um, and I don't think I have anything else installed that's particularly... Mm. Oh yeah, uh, GNOME Twitch is quite cool. I don't really want to load it, but uh, it lets you use Twitch from inside GNOME, which is pretty cool because you just put it on the side and just you know have that there. That's pretty cool. It's the application I like a lot. Um, Mm, Nvidia Visual, I don't know what that is. Uh, Wizards 101 is a cool free game you guys should play. Works great in wine, like super well. Um, and there's nothing, I don't, like I said, I don't really use that many applications. It's not like I've, I, you know, it's not like I've got crap loads of applications installed. Um, the GIMP is amazing. Um, GIMP is just actually fabulous. Um, I can't say anything bad about the GIMP at all, apart from possibly the interface needs some serious work but uh, the actual as it works i like the gimp a lot it works for all my needs um and everything yeah everything else is pretty straightforward guys so uh, if i've missed anything feel free to ask me in the comments um, i'm not going to put a massive description of this video because i don't think it really needs it it's mostly um just me talking um uh, yeah uh okay. hey there i am there's both of me there yay oh the camera i use i use a logitech uh HD seven. No, that's that's just the it says seven twenty p. I use the Logitech something or other um, to record, and my off camera, which is the one here, is an old Microsoft Live Cam. The reason I have two cameras is because I did experiment at one point with having one above me to show my desktop area, but I didn't think there was any real benefit to that for the type of videos I make. Um, so I use that one there, uh, so that when I'm talking to my co-host on the stream, he can get a feed off me because OBS locks whatever video device you're using. So if I load up my Hangouts first and uh, he can see me, then I load this. Um, this bottom right camera here doesn't work, but uh, at least, um, there we go, it's better. <laughs> but at least he can see me while we're streaming, doesn't have to do a delay if I have any visual cues going on. Um, things behind me, washing pile, yep. I'm a slob, washing <laughs> pile of washing, just where I keep it. Uh, DVDs on the side there, and there's a shelf full of comic books and uh, a Batmobile up there, and uh, Alone in the Dark is behind me. There is no reason whatsoever. I'm not advocating Alone in the Dark. It's a terrible game. The reason it's there is because the nest of cables behind it. So if I'm sitting over there on the sofa, I can't see the cables behind the box. I'd rather look at a box than a nest of cables. There's also a uh, Robbie the Robot here from the movie Forbidden Planet, which is probably one of my favorite science fiction films of all time. And a Steam Link. There you go. And uh, yeah, that's it. So. I should hopefully, I think I've covered all the questions you guys have asked me about my workflow and about my background. So if I've missed anything, you're welcome to ask me. I'm happy to help, guys. This video has gone on way more than expected. Thank you very much for watching, if you did watch this, because I, I understand you're not getting this far in, but honestly, people ask me, so I've done it now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye. Oh, don't forget, if you did get this far in the video, throw me a like and subscribe, because, you know, you've got... You've, Talk with me for 24 minutes. I've had some relationships that haven't lasted that long, so you owe it to yourself. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.